Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is soccer penalty kicks. I cover this in lesson 3.4 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. This is an excellent game to further introduce and further understand this concept of generalized games. It's going to be a very intuitive setup, something that if you've ever seen a game of soccer, or if you're familiar at all with the game of soccer, then you perfectly understand what's going on here. So the game looks like this. There's a striker, and he's faced with a penalty kick, and you can choose either to kick left or you can kick right. The goalie can either dive to the left or dive to the right, and because the kick comes at her so fast, she must guess at the same time when the striker kicks. So this is going to be a simultaneous move game as we've been covering in this chapter and also as we covered in chapter one. Now we're going to make some assumptions here in order to better facilitate our results. So we're going to assume that we have a superhuman goalie. If the goalie guesses correctly, if the striker is kicking left and she dives left, then she'll always stop the ball. And likewise, if the striker is kicking right and she's diving right, she will always stop the ball. The kicker, on the other hand, is imperfect. He has perfect accuracy to his left side, so if he kicks to the left and the goalie dives to the right, then the striker will score a goal successfully, always, but the kicker is only going to be able to hit the net with probability x on the right, so sometimes he just misses. So with probability 1 minus x, he will just completely whiff at the goal and not score even if the goalie guesses incorrectly. So the payoff matrix looks like this. This is very similar to a matching pennies sort of game where the striker wants to mismatch and the goalie wants to match. You'll see here that, again, this is this imperfectness of the striker where even if the striker is kicking left and the goalie is diving right, which is a good thing for the striker, he only makes it with probability x. So notice that this x is constrained here. Before, when we've been looking at these generalized games, we've sort of had unconstrained exogenous variables. This is true in the last video where x could be any negative number, it could be zero, or it could be any positive number. But in this case, since we're talking about probabilities, this x must be between zero and one. All right, so it should be clear that there isn't any pure strategy Nash equilibria. You can, I guess, look at that on your own if you don't believe me, but take my word for it. It's like a matching pennies game. There's obviously not going to be any mixed or any pure strategy Nash equilibria because they want to one wants to coordinate and one wants to discoordinate. Now, as I misspoke just a second ago, this is going to lead to a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So let's get to solving for that. Let's start out by looking for the striker's mixed strategy. So when we look for the striker's mixed strategy, we're looking for a probability of the uh, striker kicking left, and that probability is going to make the goalie indifferent between diving left and diving right. So we're going to start out by asking ourselves what the expected utility for the goalie is of diving left as a function of this mixed strategy of the strikers, which is a probability of kicking to the left. That's the sigma KL. So some percentage of the time, the goalie gets zero if she's diving left. That's the probability that the kicker is kicking to the left because she'll stop it here. And the rest of the time, she's going to get negative one. So the probability or the percentage of the time that the striker kicks to the right, if she's diving left, that's bad for her. He scores a goal. She gets negative one. And so her expected utility of diving left is the probability the kicker kicks left times zero plus the probability that the kicker kicks right times negative one. Now we're going to do the same thing for the goalie's expected utility of diving to the right, and that will give us our two expected utility functions, which we can then set equal to each other. So this is how we're going to solve for the goalie's expected utility of diving right. It's still a function of some mixed strategy, sigma KL, of the strikers. So some percentage of the time, the goalie is getting negative x. So here, the kicker is kicking to the left, and the goalie is guessing incorrectly. But she's only going to be punished for that x percentage of the time, because the remaining percentage of the time, the kicker is just going to miss completely. Now the rest of the time, or with probability 1 minus KL, she'll get 0 because she's guessing correctly. And so her expected utility for diving right is the probability the striker kicks to the left times negative x plus the remaining probability, or the probability that the striker kicks to the right, times 0. Now, as always, when we're running the mixed strategy algorithm here, we want to leave the player indifferent between her two peer strategies, and we're going to try to find the exact probability, sigma KL, that leaves the goalie indifferent between diving left and diving right. So these are those indifference equations. So we want to set the expected utility of diving left equal to the expected utility of diving right. We have the expected utility of diving left and the expected utility of diving right coming from the last two slides. So all we need to do is set these two values equal to each other and solve for sigma KL. And so that's what I did here. 
Uh, this actually jumped ahead pretty quickly, but you can see that these two expected utilities are coming here and here, and then I'm just working through the math to get to the sigma KL when I'm solving for sigma KL. So notice here that because x is positive, I can divide by 1 plus x. It's not equal to 0, so I'm able to effectively divide by that, and that leaves us with just this here. And you'll notice that this is a valid probability because 1 is positive, 1 plus x is positive, and again, because x is positive, 1 plus x is greater than 1, so this is in fact forming a valid probability. This isn't a negative probability, and it's not a probability greater than 1. So this is in fact an effective percentage for the, the kicker to be kicking to the left. So that's the kicker's mixed strategy. We now need to solve for the goalie's mixed strategy, and we'll be done for the game. So the goalie's mixed strategy, well, how do we find out that? We need to figure out the expected utility for KL, for kicking to the left, and the expected utility of kicking to the right for the striker. And we need to find out which particular mixed strategy or what probability of diving left of the goalie leaves the striker indifferent between those two strategies of kicking left and kicking to the right. So here we're doing it for kicking to the left. The expected utility of kicking to the left for the striker is, well, some percentage of the time, the probability that the goalie dives left, the striker gets zero. The probability that the goalie dives to the right and the kicker is still kicking to the left, well, in that case, he's earning X. And so the expected utility of kicking to the left is that probability of diving left times zero plus the remainder of the probability or the probability that the goalie dives to the right, times x. Again, remember, this x here is representing the fact that even when the goalie guesses incorrectly, if the kicker is kicking to the left, sometimes he's missing, and sometimes he's getting it, and he's only getting it with probability x. So that's why that's an x there. So that's the expected utility of kicking to the left. The expected utility of kicking to the right, it's basically the same thing, just down here now. So some percentage of the time, the goalie is diving to the left, and the striker is getting one because the goalie is guessing incorrectly, and the kicker is perfectly accurate on his right side. But then the rest of the time, the goalie actually guesses correctly, and the kicker gets nothing. So it's the probability of diving left times one, plus the remaining probability, or the probability the goalie dives right, times zero. So we have our two expected utility equations, and we just need to set those e uh, two equal to each other and solve for the mixed strategy of the goalie that makes the player or makes the striker indifferent. So again, these are the indifference equations. This is just standard from the mixed strategy algorithm. We set these two things equal to each other. That's that right there. And then we can quickly solve for that. And that's what I'm doing right here. As before, you can just pause the video and verify this on your own if you would like to, but this is the correct math. And you'll notice that again, when we have to divide by one plus x, this is a positive number, it's not zero, so we are allowed to divide by one plus x. And when we actually get to this sigma dive left, or the probability that the goalie dives to the left, this is a valid probability because x is positive, one plus x is also positive. And so that means we don't have a negative probability here. And then it's also true that one plus x is greater than x because, well, x is positive, and so this is bigger by a value of 1, so this forms a valid probability distribution, and so we're all good there. And so this is our mixed strategy. We can actually write it out like this. So the striker is kicking to the left with probability 1 over 1 plus x, and he's kicking to the right with the remaining probability, or x over 1 plus x, and the goalie is diving to the left with probability x over 1 plus x, and the goalie is diving to the right with probability 1 over 1 plus x. So we have effectively and efficiently solved for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game. Now, what's really interesting is to analyze how this game will change as a function of x. So in other words, as the striker becomes more accurate to his left side, what's going to happen? Well, this is one of the most important topics in game theory. It's the study of comparative statics. It allows us to see how changing dynamics in the game changes how the strategies and how the payoffs of the players change as well. And that's going to be the topic of the next video when we actually get to comparative statics officially. And we'll analyze the comparative statics of this, this game of penalty kicks. And you'll see something really interesting come up as a result. And I think you'll understand why comparative statics are so cool to do. But we will not get to that in this video. That will be in the next video. So until then, Take care, and I hope to see you then.